Section 41 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Golden Treasury selected by francis t palgrave section forty one poems two hundred twenty four through two hundred twenty nine two hundred twenty four past and present i remember i remember the house where i was born the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn he never came a wink too soon nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember, the roses red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built, and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday. The tree is living yet i remember i remember where i was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing my spirit flew in feathers then that is so heavy now and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow i remember i remember the fir trees dark and high I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now tis little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. T. Hood 225. The Light of Other Days Oft in the stilly night, ere slumber's chain has bound me, Fond memory brings the light of other days around me. The smiles, the tears of boyhood's years, The words of love then spoken, The eyes that shone, now dimmed and gone, The cheerful hearts, now broken. Thus in the stilly night, ere slumber's chain has bound me sad memory brings the light of other days around me when i remember all the friends so linked together i've seen around me fall like leaves in wintry weather i feel like one who treads alone some banquet hall deserted whose lights are fled whose garlands dead and all but he departed thus in the stilly night ere slumber's chain has bound me sad memory brings the light of other days around me t moore 226 invocation rarely rarely comest thou spirit of delight wherefore hast thou left me now many a day and night many a weary night and day tis since thou art fled away how shall ever one like me win thee back again with the joyous and the free thou wilt scoff at pain spirit false thou hast forgot all but those who need thee not as a lizard with the shade of a trembling leaf thou with sorrow art dismayed even the sighs of grief reproach thee that thou art not near and reproach thou wilt not hear let me set my mournful ditty to a merry measure thou wilt never come for pity thou wilt come for pleasure Pity, then, will cut away those cruel wings, and thou wilt stay. I love, 
all that thou lovest spirit of delight the fresh earth in new leaves dressed and the starry night autumn evening and the morn when the golden mists are born i love snow and all the forms of the radiant frost i love waves and winds and storms everything almost which is nature's and may be untainted by man's misery i love tranquil solitude and such society as is quiet wise and good between thee and me what difference but thou dost possess the things i seek not love them less i love love though he has wings and like light can flee but above all other things spirit i love thee thou art love and life oh come make once more my heart thy home p b shelley two hundred twenty seven stanzas written in dejection near naples the sun is warm the sky is clear the waves are dancing fast and bright blue isles and snowy mountains wear the purple noon's transparent light the breath of the moist air is light around its unexpanded buds like many a voice of one delight the winds the birds the ocean floods the city's voice itself is soft like solitudes i see the deeps untrampled floor with green and purple seaweeds strown i see the waves upon the shore like light dissolved its star showers thrown i sit upon the sands alone the lightning of the noontide ocean is flashing round me and a tone arises from its measured motion how sweet did any heart now share in my emotion alas i have nor hope nor health nor peace within nor calm around nor that content surpassing wealth the sage in meditation found and walked with inward glory crowned nor fame nor power nor love nor leisure others i see whom these surround smiling they live and call life pleasure to me that cup has been dealt in another measure yet now despair itself is mild even as the winds and waters are i could lie down like a tired child and weep away the life of care which i have borne and yet must bear till death like sleep might steal on me and i might feel in the warm air my cheek grow cold and hear the sea breathe o'er my dying brain its last monotony p b shelley two hundred twenty eight the scholar my days among the dead are past around me i behold where'er these casual eyes are cast the mighty minds of old my never-failing friends are they with whom i converse day by day with them i take delight in weal and seek relief in woe and while i understand and feel how much to them i owe my cheeks have often been bedewed with tears of thoughtful gratitude my thoughts are with the dead with them i live in long past years their virtues love their faults condemn partake their hopes and fears and from their lessons seek and find instruction with an humble mind my hopes are with the dead anon my place with them will be and i with them shall travel on through all futurity yet leaving here a name i trust 
that will not perish in the dust. R. Southey 229. The Mermaid Tavern Souls of poets dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known, happy field or mossy cavern, choicer than the Mermaid Tavern? Have ye tippled drink more fine than mine host's canary wine? Or are fruits of paradise sweeter than those dainty pies of venison? O oh, generous food, dressed as though bold Robin Hood would with his maid Marianne sup and browse from horn and can. I have heard that on a day mine host's signboard flew away. Nobody knew whither till an astrologer's old quill to a sheepskin gave the story. Said he saw you in your glory underneath a new old sign, sipping beverage divine, and pledging with contented smack the mermaid in the zodiac. Souls of poets dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known? happy field or mossy cavern choicer than the mermaid tavern j keats end of section forty one recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio Section 42 of the Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kadir Carter. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 42. Two thirty, the pride of youth. Proud Macy is in the wood, walking so early. Sweet Robin sits on the bush, singing so rarely. Tell me, thou bonny bird, when shall I marry me? When six broad gentlemen Kirkward shall carry ye. Who makes the bridal bed, birdie? Say truly. The gray-headed sexton that delves the grave duly. The glowworm o'er grave and stone shall light thee steady. The owl from the steeple sing, Welcome, proud lady. Sir W. Scott 231. The Bridge of Sighs one more unfortunate, weary of breath, rashly importunate, gone to her death. Take her up tenderly, lift her with care, fashioned so slenderly young and so fair. Look at her garments clinging like cerements, whilst the wave constantly drips from her clothing. Take her up instantly, loving, not loathing. Touch her not scornfully, think of her mournfully gently and humanly not of the stains of her all that remains of her now is pure womanly make no deep scrutiny into her mutiny rash and undutiful past all dishonor death has left on her only the beautiful still for all slips of hers one of eve's family wipe those poor lips of hers oozing so clamily. Loop up her tresses, escape from the comb, her fair auburn tresses, whilst wonderment guesses, where was her home? Who was her father? Who was her mother? Had she a sister? Had she a brother? Or was there a dearer one still, and a nearer one yet, than all other? Alas! For the rarity of Christian charity under the sun. Oh, it was pitiful. Near a whole city full. Home she had none. 
sisterly, brotherly, fatherly, motherly feelings had changed. Love by harsh evidence thrown from its eminence, even God's providence seeming estranged. Where the lamps quiver, so far in the river, with many a light from window and casement, from garret to basement she stood with amazement, houseless by night. The bleak wind of March made her tremble and shiver, but not the dark arch or the black flowing river. Mad from life's history, glad to that's mystery, swift to be hurled anywhere, anywhere out of the world. In she plunged boldly, no matter how coldly the rough river ran, over the brink of it, picture it, think of it, dissolute man, lave in it, drink of it, then if you can. Take her up tenderly, lift her with care, fashioned so slenderly, young and so fair, ere her limbs frigidly stiffen too rigidly, decently, kindly, smooth and compose them. And her eyes closed them, staring so blindly, dreadfully staring through muddy impurity, as one with a daring last look of despairing fixed on futurity. Perishing gloomily, spurred by contumely, cold in humanity, burning insanity, into her rest. Cross her hands humbly, as if praying dumbly over her breast, owning her weakness, her evil behavior, and leaving with meekness her sins to her Savior. T. Hood 232. Elegy O snatched away in beauty's bloom, on thee shall press no ponderous tomb, but on thy turf shall roses rare, their leaves the earliest of the year. And the wild cypress wave in tender gloom, And oft by yon blue gushing stream, Shall sorrow lean her drooping head, And feed deep thought with many a dream, And lingering pause and lightly thread, Fawn wretch, as if her step disturbed the dead. Away, we know that tears are vain, That death nor he's nor her is distress, Will this one teach us to complain, Or make one mourn and weep the less? And thou who tellst me to forget, Thy looks are wan, thine eyes are wet. Lord Byron 233. Hester When maidens such as Hester die, Their place ye may not well supply, Though ye among a thousand try with vain endeavor. A month or more hath she been dead, Yet cannot I by force be led, To think upon the wormy bed and her together. A springy motion in her gait, a rising step did indicate, a pride and joy no common rate, that flushed her spirit. I know not by what name beside I shall it call, if t'was not pride. It was a joy to that allied she did inherit. Her parents held the Quaker rule, which doth the human feeling cool. But she was trained in nature's school, nature had blessed her. A waking eye, a prying mind, a heart that stirs is hard to bind, a hawk's keen sight ye cannot blind. Ye could not, Hester, my sprightly neighbor, gone before, to that unknown and silent shore. Shall we not meet as heretofore some summer morning, when from thy cheerful eyes a ray hath struck a bliss upon the day, a bliss that would not go away, a sweet forewarning? Seen Lamb 2.34. Karnak He is gone on the mountain, he is lost to the forest, like a summer-dried fountain, when our need was the sorest. The foundry appearing from the raindrops shall borrow, but to us comes no cheering, to Duncan no morrow. The hand of the reaper take the airs that are hoary, but the voice of the weeper wails manhood in glory. The autumn winds rushing waft the leaves that are sarest, But our flower was in flushing when blighting was nearest. Fleet foot on the quarry, sage counsel in cumber, Red hen in the foray, how sound is thy slumber, Like the dew on the mountain, like the foam on the river, Like the bubble on the fountain, 
Thou art gone and forever. Sir W. Scott, 235, The Deathbed. We watch her breathing through the night, her breathing soft and low, as in her breast the wave of life kept heaving to and fro. But when the morn came dim and sad and chill with early showers, her quiet eyelids closed, she had another morn than ours. Tea Hood End of section 42「Section 43 of the Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is the LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 43, poems 236 through 239. 236. Rosabelle. Oh, listen, listen, ladies gay, no haughty feet of arms I tell. Soft is the note, and sad the lay that mourns the lovely Rosabelle. More, more the barge, ye gallant crew, and gentle lady deign to stay. Rest thee in Castle Ravenshoek, nor tempt the stormy firth to-day. The blackening wave is edged with white, to inch and rock the sea-mews fly. The fishers have heard the water sprite, whose screams forebode that wreck is nigh. Last night the gifted seer did view a wet shroud swathed round Lady Gay. Then stay thee, fair, in Ravenshoek, why cross the gloomy firth to-day? Tis not because Lord Lindsay's heir to-night at Rosalind leads the ball, but that my lady mother there sits lonely in her castle hall. Tis not because the ring they ride and Lindsay at the ring rides well, but that my sire the wine will chide if tis not filled by Rosabel. O'er Roslyn all that dreary night a wondrous blaze was seen to gleam. Twas broader than the watchfire's light and redder than the bright moonbeam. It glared on Roslyn's castled rock. It ruddied all the copsewood glen. Twas seen from Dryden's grove of oak, and seen from caverned hawthorn den. Seemed all on fire that chapel proud, where Roslyn's chiefs uncoffined lie. Each baron, for a sabled shroud, sheathed in his iron panoply. Seemed all on fire within, around, deep sacristy and altars pale, shone every pillar foliage bound and glimmered all the dead men's mail blazed battlement and pennant high blazed every rose carved buttress fair so still they blaze when fate is nigh the lordly line of high saint clare there are twenty of rosalind's barons bold lie buried within that proud chapelle each one the holy vault doth hold but the sea holds lovely rosabelle and each saint clair was buried there with candle with book and with knell but the sea caves rung and the wild winds sung the dirge of lovely rosabelle sir w scott 237. On an Infant Dying as Soon as Born I saw where in the shroud did lurk a curious frame of nature's work, a floweret crushed in the bud, a nameless piece of babyhood was in her cradle coffin lying, extinct with scarce the sense of dying, so soon to exchange the imprisoning womb for darker closets of the tomb. 
she did but open eye and put a clear beam forth then straight up shut for the long dark ne'er more to see through glasses of mortality riddle of destiny who can show what thy short visit meant or know what thy errand here below shall we say that nature blind checked her hand and changed her mind just when she had exactly wrought a finished pattern without fault could she flag or could she tire or lacked she the promethean fire with her nine moons long working sickened that should thy little limbs have quickened limbs so firm they seem to assure life of health and days mature woman's self in miniature limbs so fair they might supply themselves now but cold imagery the sculptor to make beauty by or did the stern-eyed fate descry that babe or mother one must die so in mercy left the stock and cut the branch to save the shock of young years widowed and the pain when single state comes back again to the lone man who reft of wife thenceforward drags a maimed life the economy of heaven is dark and wisest clerks have missed the mark why human buds like this should fall more brief than fly ephemeral that has his day while shrivelled crones stiffen with age to stocks and stones and crabbed use the conscience sears in sinners of an hundred years mother's prattle mother's kiss baby fond thou ne'er wilt miss rites which custom does impose silver bells and baby clothes coral redder than those lips which pale death did late eclipse music framed for infant's glee whistle never tuned for thee though thou wantst not thou shalt have them loving hearts were they which gave them let not one be missing nurse see them laid upon the hearse of infants slain by doom perverse why should kings and nobles have pictured trophies to their grave and we churls to thee deny thy pretty toys with thee to lie a more harmless vanity c lamb 238 the affliction of margaret where art thou my beloved son where art thou worse to me than dead o oh, find me prosperous or undone or if the grave be now thy bed why am i ignorant of the same that i may rest and neither blame nor sorrow may attend thy name seven years alas to have received no tidings of an only child to have despaired have hoped believed and be for evermore beguiled sometimes with thoughts of very bliss i catch at them and then i miss was ever darkness like to this he was among the prime in worth an object beauteous to behold well born well bred i sent him forth ingenuous innocent and bold if things ensued that wanted grace as hath been said they were not base and never blush was on my face ah little doth the young one dream when full of play and childish cares what power is in his wildest scream heard by his mother unawares he knows it not he cannot guess years to a mother bring distress but do not make her love the less neglect me no i suffered long from that ill thought and being blind said pride shall help me in my wrong kind mother have i been as kind as ever breathed and that is true 
i've wet my path with tears like dew weeping for him when no one knew my son if thou be humbled poor hopeless of honour and of gain oh do not dread thy mother's door think not of me with grief and pain i now can see with better eyes and worldly grandeur i despise and fortune with her gifts and lies alas the fowls of heaven have wings and blasts of heaven will aid their flight they mount how short a voyage brings the wanderers back to their delight chains tie us down by land and sea and wishes vain as mine may be all that is left to comfort thee perhaps some dungeon hears thee groan maimed mangled by inhuman men or thou upon a desert throne inheritest the lion's den or hast been summoned to the deep thou thou and all thy mates to keep an incommunicable sleep i look for ghosts but none will force their way to me tis falsely said that there was ever intercourse between the living and the dead for surely then i should have sight of him i wait for day and night with love and longings infinite my apprehensions come in crowds i dread the rustling of the grass the very shadows of the clouds have power to shake me as they pass i question things and do not find one that will answer to my mind and all the world appears unkind beyond participation lie my troubles and beyond relief if any chance to heave a sigh they pity me and not my grief then come to me my son or send some tidings that my woes may end i have no other earthly friend w wordsworth 239 hunting song waken lords and ladies gay on the mountain dawns the day all the jolly chase is here with hawk and horse and hunting spear hounds are in their couples yelling hawks are whistling horns are knelling merrily merrily mingle they waken lords and ladies gay waken lords and ladies gay the mist has left the mountains gray springlets in the dawn are streaming diamonds on the brick are gleaming and foresters have busy been to track the buck in thicket green now we come to chant our lay waken lords and ladies gay waken lords and ladies gay to the greenwood haste away we can show you where he lies fleet of foot and tall of size we can show the marks he made when gainst the oak his antlers frayed you shall see him brought to bay waken lords and ladies gay louder louder chant the lay waken lords and ladies gay tell them youth and mirth and glee run a course as well as we time stern huntsman who can balk staunch as hound and fleet as hawk think of this and rise with day gentle lords and ladies gay sir w scott end of section forty three recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio Section 44 of the Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave section forty four poems two hundred forty through two hundred forty three two hundred forty to the skylark 
Ethereal minstrel, pilgrim of the sky, Dost thou despise the earth where cares abound? Or while the wings aspire, Our heart and I both with thy nest Upon the dewy ground? Thy nest which thou canst drop into at will, Those quivering wings composed, That music still. To the last point of vision and beyond Mount, daring warbler, that love-prompted strain, twixt thee and thine an ever-failing bond, thrills not the less the bosom of the plain. Yet mightst thou seem, proud privilege, to sing all independent of the leafy spring. Leave to the nightingale her shady wood. A privacy of glorious light is thine, whence thou dost pour upon the world a flood of harmony with instinct more divine type of the wise who soar but never roam true to the kindred points of heaven and home w wordsworth 241 to a skylark hail to thee blithe spirit bird thou never wert that from heaven or near it pourest thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art higher still and higher from the earth thou springest like a cloud of fire the blue deep thou wingest and singing still dost soar and soaring ever singest in the golden lightning of the sunken sun o'er which clouds are brightening thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun the pale purple even melts around thy flight like a star of heaven in the broad daylight thou art unseen but yet i hear thy shrill delight keen as are the arrows of that silver sphere whose intense lamp narrows in the white dawn clear until we hardly see we feel that it is there all the earth and air with thy voice is loud as when night is bare from one lonely cloud the moon rains out her beams and heaven is overflowed what thou art we know not what is most like thee from rainbow clouds there flow not drops so bright to see as from thy presence showers a rain of melody like a poet hidden in the light of thought singing hymns unbidden till the world is wrought to sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not like a high-born maiden in a palace tower soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour with music sweet as love which overflows her bower like a glow-worm golden in a dell of dew scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view like a rose embowered in its own green leaves by warm winds deflowered till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet those heavy-winged thieves sound of vernal showers on the twinkling grass rain awakened flowers all that ever was joyous and clear and fresh thy music doth surpass teach us sprite or bird what sweet thoughts are thine i have never heard praise of love or wine that panted forth a flood of rapture so divine chorus hymeneal or triumphal chaunt matched with thine would be all but an empty vaunt a thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want what objects are the fountains of thy happy strain what fields or waves or mountains what shapes of sky or plain what love of thine own kind what ignorance of pain with thy clear keen joyance languor cannot be shadow of annoyance never came near thee thou lovest but never knew love's sad satiety waking or asleep 
thou of death must deem things more true and deep than we mortals dream or how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream we look before and after and pine for what is not our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought yet if we could scorn hate and pride and fear if we were things born not to shed a tear i know not how thy joy we ever should come near better than all measures of delightful sound better than all treasures that in books are found thy skill to poet were thou scorner of the ground teach me half the gladness that thy brain must know such harmonious madness from my lips would flow the world should listen then as i am listening now p b shelley 242 the green linnet beneath these fruit tree boughs that shed their snow-white blossoms on my head with brightest sunshine round be spread of spring's unclouded weather in this sequestered nook how sweet to sit upon my orchard seat and birds and flowers once more to greet my last year's friends together one have i marked the happiest guest in all this covert of the blest hail to thee far above the rest in joy of voice and pinion thou linnet in thy green array presiding spirit here to-day dost lead the revels of the may and this is thy dominion while birds and butterflies and flowers make all one band of paramours thou ranging up and down the bowers art soul in thy employment a life a presence like the air scattering thy gladness without care too blessed with any one to pair thyself thy own enjoyment amid yon tuft of hazel trees that twinkle to the gusty breeze behold him perched in ecstasies yet seeming still to hover there where the flutter of his wings upon his back and body flings shadows and sunny glimmerings that cover him all over my dazzled sight he oft deceives a brother of the dancing leaves then flits and from the cottage eaves pours forth his song in gushes as if by that exulting strain he mocked and treated with disdain the voiceless form he chose to feign while fluttering in the bushes w wordsworth to the cuckoo o oh, blithe newcomer i have heard i hear thee and rejoice o oh, cuckoo shall i call thee bird or but a wandering voice while i am lying on the grass thy twofold shout i hear from hill to hill it seems to pass at once far off and near though babbling only to the veil of sunshine and of flowers thou bringest unto me a tale of visionary hours thrice welcome darling of the spring even yet thou art to me no bird but an invisible thing a voice a mystery the same whom in my schoolboy days i listened to that cry which made me look a thousand ways in bush and tree and sky to seek thee did i often rove through woods and on the green and thou art still a hope a love still longed for never seen and i can listen to thee yet can lie upon the plain and listen till i do beget that golden time again o blessed bird the earth we pace again appears to be an unsubstantial fairy place that is fit home for thee w wordsworth 
End of section 44. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Section 45 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 45. 244. Ode to a Nightingale. My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past and lethe words had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beech and green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease oh for a draught of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delved earth tasting of flora and the country green dance and provencal song and sunburnt mirth oh for a beaker full of the warm south full of the true the blushful hippocrene with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth that I might drink and leave the world unseen, and with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known, the weariness, the fever, and the fret here where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last gray hairs, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pine at them beyond to-morrow. Away, away, for I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brain perplexes and retards, already with thee. Tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket, and the fruit-tree wild. White hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine, fast-fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid-May's eldest child, the coming musk-rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eves. Darkling I listen, and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names in many a mused rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain, to thy high requiem become a sod. Thou wast not born for death, immortal bird, no hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown, perhaps the self-same song that found a path through the sad heart of ruth when sick for home she stood in tears amid the alien corn the same that oft-times hath charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn forlorn the very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self adieu the fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do, deceiving elf. Adieu, adieu. 
thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows over the still stream up the hillside and now tis buried deep in the next valley glades was it a vision or a waking dream fled is that music do i wake or sleep j keats 245 upon westminster bridge september third eighteen hundred and two earth has not anything to show more fair dull would he be of soul who could pass by a sight so touching in its majesty this city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning silent bare ships towers domes theatres and temples lie open unto the fields and to the sky all bright and glittering in the smokeless air never did sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor valley rock or hill ne'er saw i never felt a calm so deep the river glideth at his own sweet will dear god the very houses seem asleep and all that mighty heart is lying still w wordsworth 246 ozymandias of egypt i met a traveller from an antique land who said two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert near them on the sand half sunk a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed and on the pedestal these words appear my name is ozymandias king of kings look on my works ye mighty and despair nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck boundless and bare the lone and level sands stretch far away p b shelley 247 composed at needpath castle the property of lord queensbury eighteen hundred and three degenerate douglas oh the unworthy lord whom mere despite of heart could so far please and love of havoc for with such disease fame taxes him that he could send forth word to level with the dust a noble horde a brotherhood of venerable trees leaving an ancient dome and towers like these beggared and outraged many hearts deplored the fate of those old trees and oft with pain the traveller at this day will stop and gaze on wrongs which nature scarcely seems to heed for sheltered places bosoms nooks and bays and the pure mountains and the gentle tweed and the green silent pastures yet remain w wordsworth 248 admonition to a traveller yes there is holy pleasure in thine eye the lovely cottage in the guardian nook hath stirred thee deeply with its own dear brook its own small pasture almost its own sky but covet not the abode oh do not sigh as many do repining while they look intruders who would tear from nature's book this precious leaf with harsh impiety think what the home would be if it were thine even thine though few thy wants roof window door the very flowers are sacred to the poor the roses to the porch which they entwine yea all that now enchants thee from the day on which it should be touched would melt away w wordsworth 249 
to the highland girl of inversnaid sweet highland girl a very shower of beauty is thy earthly dower twice seven consenting years have shed their utmost bounty on thy head and these gray rocks this household lawn these trees a veil just half withdrawn this fall of water that doth make a murmur near the silent lake this little bay a quiet road that holds in shelter thy abode in truth together ye do seem like something fashioned in a dream such forms as from their covert peep when earthly cares are laid asleep but o oh, fair creature in the light of common day so heavenly bright i bless thee vision as thou art i bless thee with a human heart god shield thee to thy latest years i neither know thee nor thy peers and yet my eyes are filled with tears with earnest feeling i shall pray for thee when i am far away for never saw i mien or face in which more plainly i could trace benignity and home-bred sense ripening in perfect innocence here scattered like a random seed remote from men thou dost not need the embarrassed look of shy distress and maidenly shamefacedness thou wearest upon thy forehead clear the freedom of a mountaineer a face with gladness overspread soft smiles by human kindness bred and seemliness complete that sways thy courtesies about thee plays with no restraint but such as springs from quick and eager visitings of thoughts that lie beyond the reach of thy few words of english speech a bondage sweetly brooked a strife that gives thy gestures grace and life so have i not unmoved in mind seen birds of tempest loving kind thus beating up against the wind what hand but would a garland cull for thee who art so beautiful o oh, happy pleasure here to dwell beside thee in some heathy dell adopt your homely ways and dress a shepherd thou a shepherdess but i could frame a wish for thee more like a grave reality thou art to me but as a wave of the wild sea and i would have some claim upon thee if i could though but of common neighbourhood what joy to hear thee and to see thy elder brother i would be thy father anything to thee now thanks to heaven that of its grace hath led me to this lonely place joy have i had and going hence i bear away my recompense in spots like these it is we prize our memory feel that she hath eyes then why should i be loath to stir i feel this place was made for her to give new pleasure like the past continued long as life shall last nor am i loath though pleased at heart sweet highland girl from thee to part for i methinks till i grow old as fair before me shall behold as i do now the cabin small the lake the bay the waterfall and thee the spirit of them all w wordsworth end of section forty five Section 46 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 46. 250 the reaper behold her single in the field yon solitary highland lass reaping and singing by herself stop here or gently pass alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain oh listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound 
no nightingale did ever chaunt more welcome notes to weary bands of travellers in some shady haunt among arabian sands no sweeter voice was ever heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest hebrides will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old unhappy far-off things and battles long ago or is it some more humble lay familiar matter of to-day some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again whate'er the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and o'er the sickle bending i listened till i had my fill and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more w wordsworth 251 the reverie of poor susan at the corner of wood street when daylight appears hangs a thrush that sings loud it has sung for three years poor susan has passed by the spot and has heard in the silence of morning the song of the bird tis a note of enchantment what ails her she sees a mountain ascending a vision of trees bright volumes of vapour through lothbury glide and a river flows on through the vale of cheapside green pastures she views in the midst of the dale down which she so often has tripped with her pail and a single small cottage a nest like a dove's the one only dwelling on earth that she loves she looks and her heart is in heaven but they fade the mist and the river the hill and the shade the stream will not flow and the hill will not rise and the colours have all passed away from her eyes w wordsworth 252 to a lady with a guitar ariel to miranda take this slave of music for the sake of him who is the slave of thee and teach it all the harmony in which thou canst and only thou make the delighted spirit glow till joy denies itself again and to intense is turned to pain for by permission and command of thine own prince ferdinand poor ariel sends this silent token of more than ever can be spoken your guardian spirit ariel who from life to life must still pursue your happiness for thus alone can ariel ever find his own from prospero's enchanted cell as the mighty verses tell to the throne of naples he lit you o'er the trackless sea flitting on your prow before like a living meteor when you die the silent moon in her interlunar swoon is not sadder in her cell than deserted ariel when you live again on earth like an unseen star of birth ariel guides you o'er the sea of life from your nativity many changes have been run since ferdinand and you begun your course of love and ariel still has tracked your steps and served your will now in humbler happier lot this is all remembered not and now alas the poor sprite is imprisoned for some fault of his in a body like a grave from you he only dares to crave for his service and his sorrow a smile to-day a song to-morrow the artist who this viol wrought to echo all harmonious thought felled a tree while on the steep the woods were in their winter sleep rocked in that repose divine on the wind-swept apennine and dreaming some of autumn past and some of spring approaching fast and some of april buds and showers and some of songs in july bowers and all of love and so this tree 
oh that such our death may be died in sleep and felt no pain to live in happier form again from which beneath heaven's fairest star the artist wrought this loved guitar and taught it justly to reply to all who question skilfully in language gentle as thine own whispering in enamoured tone sweet oracles of woods and dells and summer winds in sylvan cells for it had learnt all harmonies of the plains and of the skies of the forest and the mountains and the many-voiced fountains the clearest echoes of the hills the softest notes of falling rills the melodies of birds and bees the murmuring of summer seas and pattering rain and breathing dew and airs of evening and it knew that seldom heard mysterious sound which driven on its diurnal round as it floats through boundless day our world enkindles on its way all this it knows but will not tell to those who cannot question well the spirit that inhabits it it talks according to the wit of its companions and no more is heard than has been felt before by those who tempt it to betray these secrets of an elder day but sweetly as its answers will flatter hands of perfect skill it keeps its highest holiest tone for one beloved friend alone p b shelley two hundred and fifty three the daffodils i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay ten thousand saw i at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought for oft when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils w wordsworth 254 to the daisy with little here to do or see of things that in the great world be sweet daisy oft i talk to thee for thou art worthy thou unassuming commonplace of nature with that homely face and yet with something of a grace which love makes for thee oft on the dappled turf at ease i sit and play with similes loose types of things through all degrees thoughts of thy raising and many a fond and idle name i give to thee for praise or blame as is the humour of the game while i am gazing a nun demure of lowly port or sprightly maiden of love's court in thy simplicity the sport of all temptations a queen in crown of rubies dressed a starveling in a scanty vest are all as seem to suit thee best thy appellations a little cyclops with one eye staring to threaten and defy that thought comes next and instantly the freak is over the shape will vanish and behold a silver shield with boss of gold that spreads itself some fairy bold in fight to cover i see thee glittering from afar and then thou art a pretty star not quite so fair as many are in heaven above thee 
yet like a star with glittering crest self-poised in air thou seem'st to rest may peace come never to his nest who shall reprove thee sweet flower for by that name at last when all my reveries are past i call thee and to that cleave fast sweet silent creature that breathest with me in sun and air do thou as thou art wont repair my heart with gladness and a share of thy meek nature w wordsworth 255 ode to autumn season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run to bend with apples the mossed cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind or on a half-reaped furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers and sometime like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook or by a cider press with patient look thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours where are the songs of spring ay where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river's sallows borne aloft or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full-grown lambs loud bleat from hilly born hedge crickets sing and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies j keats end of section forty six Section 47 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 47. 256. Ode to Winter. Germany, December, 1800. When first the fiery-mantled sun his heavenly race began to run, round the earth and ocean blue, his children for the seasons flew, first in green apparel dancing, the young spring smiled with angel grace, rosy summer next advancing, rushed into her sire's embrace, her bright-haired sire who bade her keep, for ever nearest to his smiles, on Calp's olive-shaded steep, or India's citron-covered isles more remote and buxom brown the queen of vintage bowed before his throne a rich pomegranate gemmed her crown a ripe sheaf bound her zone but howling winter fled afar to hills that prop the polar star and loves on dearborn car to ride with barren darkness at his side round the shore where loud lafoden whirls to death the roaring wail round the hall where runic odin howls his war-song to the gale save when adown the ravaged globe he travels on his native storm deflowering nature's grassy robe and trampling on her faded form till light's returning lord assume the shaft that drives him to his northern fields of power to pierce his raven plume and crystal-covered shield 
O sire of storms, whose savage ear the Lapland drum delights to hear, when frenzy with her bloodshot eye implores thy dreadful deity, Archangel, power of desolation, fast descending as thou art, say hath mortal invocation spells to touch thy stony heart, then, sullen winter, hear my prayer, and gently rule the ruined year, nor chill the wanderer's bosom bare, nor freeze the wretch's falling tear to shuddering once unmantled bed thy horror breathing ague cease to lend and gently on the orphan head of innocence descend but chiefly spare o king of clouds the sailor on his airy shrouds when wrecks and beacons strew the deep and spectres walk along the deep milder yet thy snowy breezes pour on yonder tented shores where the rhine's broad billow freezes or the dark brown danube roars o winds of winter list ye there to many a deep and dying groan or start ye demons of the midnight air at shrieks and thunders louder than your own alas even your unhallowed breath may spare the victim fallen low but man will ask no truce to death no bounds to human woe t campbell two fifty seven yarrow unvisited eighteen o three from stirling castle we had seen the mazy forth unravelled had trod the banks of clyde and tay and with the tweed had travelled and when we came to clovenford then said my winsome marrow whate'er betide will turn aside and see the braes of yarrow let yarrow folk frae selkirk town who have been buying selling go back to yarrow tis their own each maiden to her dwelling on yarrow's banks let herons feed hares couch and rabbits burrow but we will downward with the tweed nor turn aside to yarrow there's gala water leader hawes both lying right beside us and dryburg where with chiming tweed the lintwhites sing in chorus there's pleasant tivot dale a land made blithe with plough and harrow why throw away a needful day to go in search of yarrow what's yarrow but a river bare that glides the dark hills under there are a thousand such elsewhere as worthy of your wonder strange words they seemed of slight and scorn my true love sighed for sorrow and looked me in the face to think i thus could speak of yarrow o oh, green said i are yarrow's homes and sweet is yarrow flowing fair hangs the apple fray the rock but we will leave it growing over hilly path and open strath will wander scotland through but though so near we will not turn into the dale of yarrow let beeves and home-bred kine partake the sweets of burn-mill meadow the swan on still st mary's lake float double swan in shadow we will not see them will not go to-day nor yet to-morrow enough if in our hearts we know there's such a place as yarrow be yarrow stream unseen unknown it must or we shall rue it we have a vision of our own ah why should we undo it the treasured dreams of times long past will keep them winsome marrow for when we're there although tis fair twill be another yarrow if care with freezing years should come and wandering seem but folly should we be loath to stir from home and yet be melancholy should life be dull and spirits low twill soothe us in our sorrow that earth has something yet to show the bony homes of yarrow w wordsworth two hundred and fifty eight yarrow visited september eighteen fourteen and is this yarrow this is the stream of which my fancy cherished so faithfully a walking dream an image that hath perished oh that some minstrel's harp were near to utter notes of gladness and chase this silence from the air that fills my heart with sadness yet why a silvery current flows with uncontrolled meanderings nor have these eyes by greener hills been soothed in all my wanderings and through her depths st mary's lake is visibly delighted for not a feature of those hills is in the mirror slighted a blue sky bends over yarrow vale save where that pearly whiteness is round the rising sun diffused a tender hazy brightness mild dawn of promise that excludes all profitless dejection though not unwilling here to admit a pensive recollection where was it that the famous flower of yarrow vale lay bleeding his bed perchance was yon smooth mound on which the herd is feeding and haply from this crystal pool now peaceful as the morning the water wraith ascended thrice and gave his doleful warning delicious is the lay that sings the haunts of happy lovers the path that leads them to the grove the leafy grove that covers and pity sanctifies the verse that paints by strength of sorrow the unconquerable strength of love bear witness rueful yarrow 
but thou that didst appear so fair to fond imagination dost rival in the light of day her delicate creation meek loveliness is round thee spread a softness still and holy the grace of forest charms decayed a pastoral melancholy that region left the vale unfolds rich groves of lofty stature with yarrow winding through the pomp of cultivated nature and rising from those lofty groves behold a ruin hoary the shattered front of newark's towers renown in border story fair scenes for childhood's opening bloom for sportive youth to stray in for manhood to enjoy his strength and age to wear away in yon cottage seems a bower of bliss a covert for protection of studious ease and generous care and every chaste affection how sweet on this autumnal day the wildwood fruits to gather and on my true love's forehead plant a crest of blooming heather and what if i enwreathed my own twere no offence to reason the sober hills thus deck their brows to meet the wintry season i see but not by sight alone loved yarrow have i won thee a ray of fancy still survives her sunshine plays upon thee thy ever youthful waters keep a course of lively pleasure and gladsome notes my lips can breathe accordant to the measure the vapours linger round the heights they melt and soon must vanish one hour is theirs nor more is mine sad thought which i would banish but that i know wherever i go thy genuine image yarrow will dwell with me to heighten joy and cheer my mind in sorrow w wordsworth end of section forty seven Section 48 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 48. 259. The Invitation best and brightest come away fairer far than this fair day which like thee to those in sorrow comes to bid a sweet good morrow to the rough year just awake in its cradle on the break the brightest hour of unborn spring through the winter wandering found it seems the halcyon morn to hoar february born bending from heaven in azure mirth it kissed the forehead of the earth and smiled upon the silent sea and bade the frozen streams be free and waked to music all their fountains and breathed upon the frozen mountains and like a prophetess of may strewed flowers upon the barren way making the wintry world appear like one on whom thou smilest dear away away from men and towns to the wild wood and the downs to the silent wilderness where the soul need not repress its music lest it should not find an echo in another's mind while the touch of nature's art harmonizes heart to heart radiant sister of the day awake arise and come away to the wild woods and the plains and the pools where winter rains image all their roof of leaves where the pine its garland weaves of sapless green and ivy dun round stems that never kiss the sun where the lawns and pastures be and the sand hills of the sea where the melting hoar-frost wets the daisy star that never sets and wind flowers and violets which yet join not scent to hue crown the pale year weak and new when the night is left behind in the deep east dim and blind and the blue noon is over us and the multitudinous billows murmur at our feet where the earth and ocean meet and all things seem only one in the universal sun p b shelley 260 the recollection now the last day of many days all beautiful and bright as thou the loveliest and the last is dead rise memory and write its praise up do thy wonted work come trace the epitaph of glory fled for now the earth has changed its face a frown is on the heaven's brow 
we wandered to the pine forest that skirts the ocean's foam the lightest wind was in its nest the tempest in its home the whispering waves were half asleep the clouds were gone to play and on the bosom of the deep the smile of heaven lay it seemed as if the hour were one sent from beyond the skies which scattered from above the sun a light of paradise we paused amid the pines that stood the giants of the waste tortured by storms to shapes as rude as serpents interlaced and soothed by every azure breath that under heaven is blown to harmonies and hues beneath as tender as its own now all the tree-tops lay asleep like green waves on the sea and still as in the silent deep the ocean woods may be how calm it was the silence there by such a chain was bound that even the busy woodpecker made stiller by her sound the inviolable quietness the breath of peace we drew with its soft motion made not less the calm that round us grew there seemed from the remotest seat of the wide mountain waste to the soft flower beneath our feet a magic circle traced a spirit interfused around a thrilling silent life to momentary peace it bound our mortal nature's strife and still i felt the centre of the magic circle there was one fair form that filled with love the lifeless atmosphere we paused beside the pools that lie under the forest bough each seemed as twere a little sky gulfed in a world below a firmament of purple light which in the dark earth lay more boundless than the depth of night and purer than the day in which the lovely forests grew as in the upper air more perfect both in shape and hue than any spreading there there lay the glade and neighboring lawn and through the dark green wood the white sun twinkling like the dawn out of a speckled cloud sweet views which in our world above can never well be seen were imaged by the water's love of that fair forest green and all was interfused beneath with an elysian glow an atmosphere without a breath a softer day below like one beloved the scene had lent to the dark water's breast its very leaf and lineament with more than truth expressed until an envious wind crept by like an unwelcome thought which from the mind's too faithful eye blots one dear image out though thou art ever fair and kind the forests ever green less oft is peace in shelley's mind than calm in waters seen p b shelley two hundred sixty one by the sea it is a beauteous evening calm and free the holy time is quiet as a nun breathless with adoration the broad sun is sinking down in its tranquillity the gentleness of heaven is on the sea listen the mighty being is awake and doth with his eternal motion make a sound like thunder everlastingly dear child dear girl that walkest with me here if thou appear untouched by solemn thought thy nature is not therefore less divine thou liest in abraham's bosom all the year and worshipst at the temple's inner shrine god being with thee when we know it not w wordsworth 262 to the evening star star that bringest home the bee and settest the weary laborer free if any star shed peace tis thou that sensed it from above appearing when heaven's breath and brow are sweet as hers we love 
come to the luxuriant skies whilst the landscape's odors rise whilst far-off lowing herds are heard and songs when toil is done from cottages whose smoke unstirred curls yellow in the sun star of love's soft interviews parted lovers on thee muse their remembrancer in heaven of thrilling vows thou art too delicious to be riven by absence from the heart t campbell two hundred sixty three datur hora quieti the sun upon the lake is low the wild birds hush their song the hills have evening's deepest glow yet leonard tarries long now all whom varied toil and care from home and love divide in the calm sunset may repair each to the loved one's side the noble dame on turret high who waits her gallant knight looks to the western beam to spy the flash of armor bright the village maid with hand on brow the level ray to shade upon the footpath watches now for colin's darkening played now to their mates the wild swans row by day they swam apart and to the thicket wanders slow the hind beside the heart the woodlark at his partner's side twitters his closing song all meet whom day and care divide but leonard tarries long sir w scott two hundred sixty four to the moon art thou pale for weariness of climbing heaven and gazing on the earth wandering companionless among the stars that have a different birth and ever changing like a joyless eye that finds no object worth its constancy p b shelley two hundred sixty five a widow bird sat mourning for her love upon a wintry bough the frozen wind crept on above the freezing stream below there was no leaf upon the forest bare no flower upon the ground and little motion in the air except the mill wheels sound p b shelley end of section 48section 49 of the golden treasury of the best songs and lyrical pieces in the english language this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio the golden treasury selected by francis t palgrave section 49 poems 266 through 272 266 to sleep a flock of sheep that leisurely pass by one after one the sound of rain and bees murmuring the fall of rivers winds and seas smooth fields white sheets of water and pure sky i've thought of all by turns and still i lie sleepless and soon the small birds melodies must hear first uttered from my orchard trees and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry even thus last night and two nights more i lay and could not win thee sleep by any stealth so do not let me wear to-night away without thee what is all the morning's wealth come blessed barrier between day and day dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health w wordsworth 267 the soldier's dream 
Our bugle sang truce, for the night cloud had lowered, and the sentinel stars set their watch in the sky, and thousands had sunk on the ground overpowered, the weary to sleep, and the wounded to die. When reposing that night on my pallet of straw by the wolf-scaring faggot that guarded the slain, at the dead of the night a sweet vision I saw, and thrice ere the morning I dreamt it again. Methought from the battlefield's dreadful array far, far I had roamed on a desolate track. T'was autumn, and sunshine arose on the way to the home of my fathers that welcomed me back. I flew to the pleasant fields traversed so oft in life's morning march when my bosom was young. I heard my own mountain goats bleating aloft and knew the sweet strain that the corn reapers sung. Then pledged we the wine cup, and fondly I swore from my home and my weeping friends never to part. My little ones kissed me a thousand times o'er and my wife sobbed aloud in her fullness of heart stay stay with us rest thou art weary and worn and fain was their war-broken soldier to stay but sorrow returned with the dawning of morn and the voice in my dreaming ear melted away t campbell 268. A Dream of the Unknown I dreamed that as I wandered by the way, bare winter suddenly was changed to spring, and gentle odors led my steps astray, mixed with a sound of waters murmuring along a shelving bank of turf, which lay under a copse and hardly dared to fling its green arms round the bosom of the stream but kissed it and then fled as thou mightest in dream there grew pied windflowers and violets daisies those pearled arcturi of the earth the constellated flower that never sets faint oxlips tender bluebells at whose birth the sod scarce heaved, and that tall flower that wets its mother's face with heaven-collected tears, when the low wind its playmate's voice it hears. And in the warm hedge grew lush eglantine, green cowbind, and the moonlight-colored may, and cherry blossoms and white cups whose wine was the bright dew yet drained not by the day and wild roses and ivy serpentine with its dark buds and leaves wandering astray and flowers azure black and streaked with gold fairer than any wakened eyes behold and nearer to the river's trembling edge there grew broad flag-flowers purple pranked with white and starry river-buds among the sedge and floating water-lilies broad and bright which lit the oak that overhung the hedge with moonlight beams of their own watery light and bulrushes and reeds of such deep green as soothed the dazzled eye with sober sheen methought that of these visionary flowers i made a nosegay bound in such a way that the same hues which in their natural bowers were mingled or opposed the like array kept these imprisoned children of the hours within my hand and then elate and gay i hastened to the spot whence i had come that i might there present it oh to whom P. B. Shelley. 269. The Inner Vision. Most sweet it is with unuplifted eyes to pace the ground, if path there be or none, while a fair region round the traveller lies, which he forbears again to look upon. 
pleased rather with some soft ideal scene the work of fancy or some happy tone of meditation slipping in between the beauty coming and the beauty gone if thought and love desert us from that day let us break off all commerce with the muse with thought and love companions of our way whate'er the senses take or may refuse the mind's internal heaven shall shed her dews of inspiration on the humblest lay w wordsworth 270 the realm of fancy ever let the fancy roam pleasure never is at home at a touch sweet pleasure melteth like to bubbles when rain pelteth then let winged fancy wander through the thoughts still spread beyond her open wide the mind's cage door she'll dart forth and cloudward soar o oh, sweet fancy let her loose summer's joys are spoilt by use and the enjoying of the spring fades as does its blossoming autumn's red-lipped fruitage too blushing through the mist and dew cloys with tasting what do then sit thee by the ingle when the sere faggot blazes bright spirit of a winter's night when the soundless earth is muffled and the caked snow is shuffled from the ploughboy's heavy shoon when the night doth meet the noon in dark conspiracy to banish even from her sky sit thee there and send abroad with a mind self-overawed fancy high commissioned send her she has vassals to attend her she will bring in spite of frost beauties that the earth hath lost she will bring thee all together all delights of summer weather all the buds and bells of may from dewy sward or thorny spray all the heaped autumn's wealth with a still mysterious stealth she will mix these pleasures up like three fit wines in a cup and thou shalt quaff it thou shalt hear distant harvest carols clear rustle of the reaped corn sweet birds antheming the morn and in the same moment hark tis the early april lark or the rooks with busy caw foraging for sticks and straw thou shalt at one glance behold the daisy and the marigold white plumed lilies and the first hedge-grown primrose that hath burst shaded hyacinth alway sapphire queen of the mid-may and every leaf and every flower pearled with the self-same shower thou shalt see the field mouse peep meagre from its cellared sleep and the snake all winter thin cast on sunny bank its skin freckled nest eggs thou shalt see hatching in the hawthorn tree when the hen bird's wing doth rest quiet on her mossy nest then the hurry and alarm when the beehive casts its swarm acorns ripe down pattering while the autumn breezes sing o oh, sweet fancy let her loose everything is spoilt by use where's the cheek that doth not fade too much gazed at where's the maid whose lip mature is ever new where's the eye however blue doth not weary where's the face one would meet in every place where's the voice however soft one would hear so very oft at a touch sweet pleasure melteth like to bubbles when rain pelteth let then winged fancy find thee a mistress to thy mind dulcet eyed as ceres daughter ere the god of torment taught her how to frown and how to chide with a waist and with a side white as hebe's when her zone slipped its golden clasp and down fell her kirtle to her feet 
while she held the goblet sweet and jove grew languid break the mesh of the fancy's silken leash quickly break her prison string and such joys as these she'll bring let the winged fancy roam pleasure never is at home j keats two hundred seventy one hymn to the spirit of nature life of life thy lips enkindle with their love the breath between them and thy smiles before they dwindle make the cold air fire then screen them in those locks where whoso gazes faints entangled in their mazes child of light thy limbs are burning through the veil which seems to hide them as the radiant lines of morning through thin clouds ere they divide them and this atmosphere divinest shrouds thee wheresoe'er thou shinest fair are others none beholds thee but thy voice sounds low and tender like the fairest for it folds thee from the sight that liquid splendor and all feel yet see thee never as i feel now lost forever lamp of earth where'er thou movest its dim shapes are clad with brightness and the souls of whom thou lovest walk upon the winds with lightness till they fail as i am failing dizzy lost yet unbewailing p b shelley two hundred seventy two written in early spring i heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove i sat reclined in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind to her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man through primrose tufts in that sweet bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes the birds around me hopped and played their thoughts i cannot measure but the least motion which they made it seemed a thrill of pleasure the budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air and i must think do all i can that there was pleasure there if this belief from heaven be sent if such be nature's holy plan have i not reason to lament what man has made of man w wordsworth end of section forty nine recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio section fifty of the golden treasury of the best songs and lyrical pieces in the english language this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio the golden treasury selected by francis t palgrave section fifty poem two hundred seventy three ruth or the influences of nature when ruth was left half desolate her father took another mate and ruth not seven years old a slighted child at her own will went wandering over dale and hill in thoughtless freedom bold and she had made a pipe of straw and music from that pipe could draw like sounds of winds and floods had built a bower upon the green 
as if she from her birth had been an infant of the woods beneath her father's roof alone she seemed to live her thoughts her own herself her own delight pleased with herself nor sad nor gay she passed her time and in this way grew up to woman's height there came a youth from georgia's shore a military cask he wore with splendid feathers dressed he brought them from the cherokees the feathers nodded in the breeze and made a gallant crest from indian blood you deem him sprung but no he spake the english tongue and bore a soldier's name and when america was free from battle and from jeopardy he crossed the ocean came with hues of genius on his cheek in finest tones the youth could speak while he was yet a boy the moon the glory of the sun and streams that murmur as they run had been his dearest joy he was a lovely youth i guess the panther in the wilderness was not so fair as he and when he chose to sport and play no dolphin ever was so gay upon the tropic sea among the indians he had fought and with him many tales he brought of pleasure and of fear such tales as told to any maid by such a youth in the green shade were perilous to hear he told of girls a happy rout who quit their fold with dance and shout their pleasant indian town to gather strawberries all day long returning with a choral song when daylight is gone down he spake of plants that hourly change their blossoms through a boundless range of intermingling hues with budding fading faded flowers they stand the wonder of the bowers from morn to evening dews he told of the magnolia spread high as a cloud high overhead the cypress and her spire of flowers that with one scarlet gleam cover a hundred leagues and seem to set the hills on fire the youth of green savannas spake and many an endless endless lake with all its fairy crowds of islands that together lie as quietly as spots of sky among the evening clouds and then he said uh, how sweet it were a fisher or a hunter there in sunshine or in shade to wander with an easy mind and build a household fire and find a home in every glade what days and what bright years ah me our life were life indeed with thee so past in quiet bliss and all the while said he to know that we were in a world of woe on such an earth as this and then he sometimes interwove fond thoughts about a father's love for there said he are spun around the heart such tender ties that our own children to our eyes are dearer than the sun sweet ruth and could you go with me my helpmate in the woods to be our shed at night to rear or run my own adopted bride a sylvan huntress at my side and drive the flying deer beloved ruth no more he said the wakeful ruth at midnight shed a solitary tear she thought again and did agree with him to sail across the sea and drive the flying deer and now as fitting is and right we in the church our faith will plight a husband and a wife even so they did and i may say that to sweet ruth that happy day was more than human life through dream and vision did she sink delighted all the while to think that on those lonesome floods and green savannas she should share his board with lawful joy and bear his name in the wild woods but as you have before been told this stripling sportive gay and bold 
and with his dancing crest so beautiful through savage lands had roamed about with vagrant bands of indians in the west the wind the tempest roaring high the tumult of a tropic sky might well be dangerous food for him a youth to whom was given so much of earth so much of heaven and such impetuous blood whatever in those climes he found irregular in sight or sound did to his mind impart a kindred impulse seemed allied to his own powers and justified the workings of his heart nor less to feed voluptuous thought the beauteous forms of nature wrought fair trees and gorgeous flowers the breezes their own languor lent the stars had feelings which they sent into those favoured bowers yet in his worst pursuits i ween that sometimes there did intervene pure hopes of high intent for passions linked to forms so fair and stately needs must have their share of noble's sentiment but ill he lived much evil saw with men to whom no better law nor better life was known deliberately and undeceived those wild men's vices he received and gave them back his own his genius and his moral frame were thus impaired and he became the slave of low desires a man who without self-control would seek what the degraded soul unworthily admires and yet he with no feigned delight had wooed the maiden day and night had loved her night and morn what could he less than love a maid whose heart with so much nature played so kind and so forlorn sometimes most earnestly he said o oh, ruth i have been worse than dead false thoughts thoughts bold and vain encompassed me on every side when i in confidence and pride had crossed the atlantic main before me shone a glorious world fresh as a banner bright unfurled to music suddenly i looked upon those hills and plains and seemed as if let loose from chains to live at liberty no more of this for now by thee dear ruth more happily set free with nobler zeal i burn my soul from darkness is released like the whole sky when to the east the morning doth return full soon that better mind was gone no hope no wish remained not one they stirred him now no more new objects did new pleasure give and once again he wished to live as lawless as before meanwhile as thus with him it fared they for the voyage were prepared and went to the seashore but when they thither came the youth deserted his poor bride and ruth could never find him more god help thee ruth such pain she had that she in half a year was mad and in a prison housed and there exulting in her wrongs among the music of her songs she fearfully caroused yet sometimes milder hours she knew nor wanted sun nor rain nor dew nor pastimes of the may they all were with her in her cell and a clear brook with cheerful knell did o'er the pebbles play when ruth three seasons thus had lain there came a respite to her pain she from her prison fled but of the vagrant none took thought and where it liked her best she sought her shelter and her bread among the fields she breathed again the master current of her brain ran permanent and free and coming to the banks of tone there did she rest and dwell alone under the greenwood tree the engines of her pain 
the tools that shaped her sorrow rocks and pools and airs that gently stirred the vernal leaves she loved them still nor ever taxed them with the ill which had been done to her a barn her winter bed supplies but till the warmth of summer skies and summer days is gone and all do in this tale agree she sleeps beneath the greenwood tree another home hath none an innocent life yet far astray and ruth will long before her day be broken down and old sore aches she needs must have but less of mind than body's wretchedness from damp and rain and cold if she is pressed by want of food she from her dwelling in the wood repairs to a roadside and there she begs at one steep place where up and down with easy pace the horsemen travellers ride that oaten pipe of hers is mute or thrown away but with a flute her loneliness she cheers this flute made of a hemlock stalk at evening in his homeward walk the quantock woodman hears i too have passed her on the hills setting her little water-mills by spouts and fountains wild such small machinery as she turned ere she had wept ere she had mourned a young and happy child farewell and when thy days are told ill-fated ruth in hallowed mould thy corpse shall buried be for thee a funeral bell shall ring and all the congregation sing a christian psalm for thee w wordsworth end of section fifty recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio Section 51 of the Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Capricia Page. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 51. 274 written in the eugenian hills north italy many a green isle needs must be in the deep wide sea of misery or the mariner worn and wan never thus could voyage on day and night and night and day drifting on his dreary way with a solid darkness black closing round his vessel's track whilst above the sunless sky, big with clouds, hangs heavily, and behind the tempest fleet hurries on the lightning feet, riving sail and cord and plank, till the ship has almost drank death from the oar brimming deep, and sinks down, down, like that sleep when the dreamer seems to be weltering through eternity. And the dim low line before of a dark and distant shore still recedes, as ever still longing with a divided will. But no power to seek or shun, he has ever drifted on, o'er the unreposing wave, to the haven of the grave. Ah, oh, many flowering islands lie in the waters of wide agony. To such a one this morn was led my bark, by soft winds piloted, mid the mountains Eugenian. I stood listening to the paean by which the legioned rooks did hail the sun's uprise majestically. Gathering round with wings all hoar, through the dewy mist they soar like grey shadows, till the eastern heaven bursts, and then, as clouds of even freckled with fire and azure, lie in the unfathomable sky, so their plumes of purple grain, starred with the drops of golden rain, gleam above the sunlight woods as in silent multitudes, on the morning's fitful gale, through the broken mist they sail. 
and the vapors cloven and gleaming follow down the deep steep streaming till all is bright and clear and still round the solitary hill beneath it spread like a green sea the waveless plain of lombardy bound by the vaporous air islanded by cities fair underneath day's azure eyes ocean's nursling venice lies a peopled labyrinth of walls amphitrite's destined halls which her hoary sire now paves with his blue and beaming waves lo the sun upsprings behind broad red radiant half reclined on the level quivering line of the waters crystalline and before the chasm of light as within a furnace bright column tower and dome and spire shine like obelisks of fire pointing with inconstant motion from the altar of dark ocean to the sapphire tinted skies as the flames of sacrifice from the marble shrines did rise as to pierce the dome of gold where apollo spoke of old sun-girt city thou hast been ocean's child and then his queen now is come a darker day and thou soon must be his prey if the power that raised thee here hallow so thy watery beer a less drear run then than now with thy conquest branded brow stooping to the slave of slaves from thy throne among the waves wilt thou be when the sea mew flies as once before it flew o'er thine isles depopulate and all is in its ancient state save where many a palace gate with green sea flowers o'ergrown like a rock of ocean's own topples o'er the abandoned sea as the tides change sullenly the fisher on his watery way wandering at the close of day will spread his sail and seize his oar till he pass the gloomy shore lest thy dead should from their sleep bursting o'er the starlight deep lead a rapid mask of death o'er the waters of his path noon descends around me now till the noon of autumn's glow when a soft and purple mist like a vaporous amethyst or an air dissolved star mingling light and fragrance far from the curved horizon's bound to the point of heaven's profound fills the overflowing sky and the plains that silent lie underneath the leaves unsodden where the infant frost has trodden with his morning winged feet whose bright print is gleaming yet and the red and golden vines piercing with their trellised lines the rough dark skirted wilderness the dun and bladed grass no less pointed from this hoary tower in the windless air the flower glimmering at my feet the line of the olive sandaled apennine in the south dimly islanded and the alps whose snows are spread high between the clouds and sky and of living things each one and my spirit which so long darkened the swift stream of song interpenetrated lie by the glory of the sky be it love light harmony odor or the soul of all which from heaven like dew doth fall or the mind which freed this verse peopling the lone universe noon descends and after noon autumn's evening meets me soon leading the infantine moon and that one star which to her almost seems to minister half the crimson light she brings from the sunset's radiant springs and the soft dreams of the morn which like winged winds have borne to that silent isle which lies mid remembered agonies the frail bark of this one being pass to other sufferers fleeing and its ancient pilot pain sits beside the helm again other flowering islands must be in the sea of life and agony other spirits float and flee o'er that gulf e'en now perhaps on some rock the wild wave wraps with folding wings they waiting sit for my bark 
to pilot it to some calm and blooming cove, where for me and those I love may a windless bower be built, far from passion, pain, and guilt, in a dell mid lawny hills, which the wild sea murmur fills, and soft sunshine, and the sound of old forest echoing rounds, and the light and smell divine of all flowers that breathe and shine. We may live so happy there, that the spirits of the air envying us may even entice to our healing paradise the polluting multitudes. But their rage would be subdued by that clime divine and calm, and the winds whose wings rain balm on the uplifted soul, and leaves under which the bright sea heaves, while each breathless interval, in their whisperings musical, the inspired soul supplies with its own deep melodies. And the love which heals all strife circling, like the breath of life, all things in that sweet abode, with its own mild brotherhood. They, not it, would change, and soon every sprite beneath the moon would repent its envy vain, and the earth grow young again. P.B. Shelley 275. Ode to the West Wind O oh, wild west wind, thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven, like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing, yellow and black and pale and hectic red, pestilence-stricken multitudes, O oh, thou who charioteth to their dark wintry bed the winged seeds, where they lie cold and low, each like a corpse within its grave, until thine azure sister of the spring shall blow her clarion or the dreaming earth and fill, driving sweet buds like flocks to feed in air, with living hues and odors, plain and hill. Wild spirit, which art moving everywhere, destroyer and preserver, hear, oh hear, Thou on whose stream, mid the steep sky's commotion, loose clouds like earth's decaying weaves are shed, shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean, angels of rain and lightning, there are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce menad, e'en from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, the locks of the approaching storm. Thou dirge of the dying year, to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre, vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapors, from whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst. O oh, hear! Thou who didst waken from his summer dreams the blue Mediterranean, where he lies lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams, beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay, and saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves in tenser day, all overgrown with azure moss and flowers so sweet, the sense faints picturing them. Thou for whose path the Atlantic's level powers cleave them into chasms, while far below the sea blooms and the oozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of the ocean, Know thy voice, and suddenly grow gray with fear and tremble and despoil themselves. O oh, hear! If I were a dead leaf, thou mightst bear. If I were a swift cloud to fly to thee, a wave to pant beneath thy power, and share the impulse of thy strength, only less free than thou. O oh, uncontrollable! If even I were, as in my boyhood, and could be the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven, as then, when to outstrip the sky you speed, scarce seemed a vision. I would ne'er have striven, as thus with thee in prayer in my sore need. O oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud, I fall upon the thorns of life, I bleed. 
a heavy weight of hours has chained and bowed one too like thee, tameless and swift and proud. Make me thy lyre, even as the forest is. What if my leaves are falling like its own? The tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone, sweet though in sadness. Be thou, spirit fierce, my spirit. Be thou me, impetuous one. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth. And by the incantation of this verse scatter, as from the unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Be through my lips to unawakened earth the trumpet of a prophecy. O oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? P.B. Shelley 276. Nature and the Poet Suggested by a picture of Peel Castle in a Storm Painted by Sir George Beaumont I was thy neighbor once, thou rugged pile. Four summer weeks I dwelt in sight of thee. I saw thee every day, and all the while thy form was sleeping on a grassy sea. So pure the sky, so quiet was the air, so like, so very like was day to day. Whene'er I looked, thy image still was there. It trembled, but it never passed away. How perfect was the calm! It seemed no sleep, no mood, which season takes away or brings. I could have fancied that the mighty deep was even the gentlest of all gentle things. Oh, even if mine had been the painter's hand to express what then I saw, and add the gleam, the light that never was on ocean or land, the consecration and the poet's dream. I would have painted thee, thou hoary pile, amid a world how different from this. Besides a sea that could not cease a smile on tranquil land beneath the sky of bliss, a picture had it been of lasting ease, Elysian quiet, without toil or strife, no motion but the moving tide, a breeze, or merely silent nature's breathing life. Such in the fond illusion of my heart, such pictures would I at the time have made, and seen the soul of truth in every part, a steadfast peace that might not be betrayed. So once it would have been, to so no more, I have submitted to a new control, a power is gone which nothing can restore, a deep distress which humanizes my soul. Not for a moment could I now behold a smiling sea and be what I have been. The feeling of my loss will ne'er be old. This which I know I speak with mind serene. Then Beaumont friend, who would have been the friend if he had lived of him whom I deplore, this work of thine I blame not, but commend. The sea is anger, and that dismal shore. Oh, tis a passionate work, yet wise and well, well chosen in the spirit that is here. That hulk which labors in the deadly swell, this rueful sky, this pageantry of fear, and this huge castle, standing here sublime, I love to see the look with which it braves, Cased in the unfeeling armor of old time, the lightning, the fierce wind, and trampling waves. Farewell, farewell the heart that lives alone, housed in a dream, at distance from the kind. Such happiness, wherever it be known, is to be pitied, for it is surely blind. But welcome fortitude and patient cheer, and frequent sighs of what is to be borne, 
such sights or worse as are before me here. Not without hope, we suffer and we mourn. W. Wordsworth 277. The Poet's Dream On a poet's lips I slept, dreaming like a love, adept in the sound his breathing kept. Nor seeks nor finds his mortal blisses, but finds on the aerial kisses of shapes that haunt thought's wildernesses. He will watch from dawn to gloom, the lake reflected sun illume, the yellow bees in the ivy bloom, nor heed nor see what things they be. But from these create he can forms more real than living man, nurslings of immortality. P.B. Shelley End of section 51 Recording by Capricia Page Section 52 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave. Section 52. 278. The world is too much with us, late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away, a sordid boon. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers, for this for everything we are out of tune it moves us not great god i'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn so might i standing on this pleasant lea have glimpses that would make me less forlorn have sight of proteus rising from the sea or hear old triton blow his wreathed horn w wordsworth 279 within king's college chapel cambridge tax not the royal saint with vain expense with ill-matched aims the architect who planned albeit laboring for a scanty band of white-robed scholars only this immense and glorious work of fine intelligence give all thou canst high heaven rejects the lore of nicely calculated less or more so deemed the man who fashioned for the sense these lofty pillars spread that branching roof self-poised and scooped into ten thousand cells where light and shade repose where music dwells lingering and wandering on as loath to die like thoughts whose very sweetness yieldeth proof that they were born for immortality w wordsworth 280 youth and age verse a breeze mid blossom straying where hope clung feeding like a bee both were mine life went a maying with nature hope and poesy when i was young when i was young ah woeful when ah for the change twixt now and then this breathing house not built with hands this body that does me grievous wrong or airy cliffs and glittering sands how lightly then it flashed along like those trim skiffs unknown of yore on winding lakes and rivers wide that ask no aid of sail or oar that fear no spite of wind or tide not cared this body for wind or weather when youth and i lived in it together flowers are lovely 
love is flower-like friendship is a sheltering tree oh the joys that came down shower-like of friendship love and liberty ere i was old ere i was old ah woeful air which tells me youth's no longer here oh youth for years so many and sweet tis known that thou and i were one i'll think it but a fond conceit it cannot be that thou art gone thy vesper bell hath not yet tolled and thou wert i a masker bold what strange disguise hast now put on to make believe that thou art gone i see these locks in silvery slips this drooping gait this altered size but springtide blossoms on thy lips and tears take sunshine from thine eyes life is but thought so think i will that youth and i are housemates still dewdrops are the gems of morning but the tears of mournful eve where no hope is life's a warning that only serves to make us grieve when we are old that only serves to make us grieve with oft and tedious taking leave like some poor nigh-related guest that may not rudely be dismissed yet hath outstayed his welcome while and tells the jest without a smile s t coleridge 281 the two april mornings we walked along while bright and red uprose the morning sun and matthew stopped he looked and said the will of god be done a village schoolmaster was he with hair of glittering gray as blithe a man as you could see on a spring holiday and on that morning through the grass and by the steaming rills we travelled merrily to pass a day among the hills our work said i was well begun then from thy breast what thought beneath so beautiful a sun so sad a sigh has brought a second time did matthew stop and fixing still his eye upon the eastern mountain top to me he made reply yon cloud with that long purple cleft brings fresh into my mind a day like this which i have left full thirty years behind and just above yon slope of corn such colours and no other were in the sky that april morn of this the very brother with rod and line i sued the sport which that sweet season gave and to the churchyard come stopped short beside my daughter's grave nine summers had she scarcely seen the pride of all the vale and then she sang she would have been a very nightingale six feet in earth my emma lay and yet i loved her more for so it seemed than till that day i e'er had loved before and turning from her grave i met beside the churchyard yew a blooming girl whose hair was wet with points of morning dew a basket on her head she bare her brow was smooth and white to see a child so very fair it was a pure delight no fountain from its rocky cave e'er dripped with foot so free she seemed as happy as a wave that dances on the sea there came from me a sigh of pain which i could ill confine i looked at her and looked again and did not wish her mine matthew is in his grave yet now methinks i see him stand as at that moment with a bow of wilding in his hand w wordsworth 282 the fountain a conversation 
we talked with open heart and tongue affectionate and true a pair of friends though i was young and matthew seventy-two we lay beneath a spreading oak beside a mossy seat and from the turf a fountain broke and gurgled at our feet now matthew said i let us match this water's pleasant tune with some old border song or catch that suits a summer's noon or of the church clock and the chimes sing here beneath the shade that half-mad thing of witty rhymes which you last april made in silence matthew lay and eyed the spring beneath the tree and thus the dear old man replied the grey-haired man of glee no check no stay this streamlet fears how merrily it goes twill murmur on a thousand years and flow as now it flows and here on this delightful day i cannot choose but think how oft a vigorous man i lay beside this fountain's brink my eyes are dim with childish tears my heart is idly stirred for the same sound is in my ears which in those days i heard thus fares it still in our decay and yet the wiser mind mourns less for what age takes away than what it leaves behind the blackbird amid leafy trees the lark above the hill let loose their carols when they please are quiet when they will with nature never do they wage a foolish strife they see a happy youth and their old age is beautiful and free but we are pressed by heavy laws and often glad no more we wear a face of joy because we have been glad of yore if there be one who need bemoan his kindred laid in earth the household hearts that were his own it is the man of mirth my days my friend are almost gone my life has been approved and many love me but by none am i enough beloved now both himself and me he wrongs the man who thus complains i live and sing my idle songs upon these happy plains and matthew for thy children dead i'll be a son to thee at this he grasped my hand and said alas that cannot be we rose up from the fountain side and down the smooth descent of the green sheep track did we glide and through the wood we went and ere we came to leonard's rock he sang those witty rhymes about the crazy old church clock and the bewildered chimes w wordsworth 283 the river of life the more we live more brief appear our life's succeeding stages a day to childhood seems a year and years like passing ages the gladsome current of our youth ere passion yet disorders steals lingering like a river smooth along its grassy borders but as the careworn cheek grows wan and sorrow's shafts fly thicker ye stars that measure life to man why seem your courses quicker when joys have lost their bloom and breath and life itself is vapid why as we reach the falls of death feel we its tide more rapid it may be strange yet who would change time's course to lower speeding when one by one our friends have gone and left our bosoms bleeding heaven gives our years of fading strength indemnifying fleetness and those of youth a seeming length proportioned to their sweetness t campbell End of section 52
Section 53 of The Golden Treasury of the Best Songs and Lyrical Pieces in the English Language. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Golden Treasury, selected by Francis T. Palgrave, Section 53, Poems 284 through 288. 284. The Human Seasons. Four seasons fill the measure of the year. There are four seasons in the mind of man. He has his lusty spring, when fancy clear takes in all beauty with an easy span. He has his summer, when luxuriously spring's honeyed cud of youthful thought he loves to ruminate, and by such dreaming high is nearest unto heaven. Quiet coves his soul has in its autumn, when his wings he furleth close. Contented so to look on mists in idleness, to let fair things pass by unheeded, as a threshold brook. He has his winter, too, of pale misfeature, or else he would forego his mortal nature. J. Keats 285. A Lament O world, O life, O time, on whose last steps I climb, trembling at that where I had stood before. When will return the glory of your prime? No more, no, oh, never more. Out of the day and night a joy has taken flight. Fresh spring and summer and winter hoar move my faint heart with grief, but with delight. No more, oh, never more. P. B. Shelley 286 My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old, or let me die. The child is father of the man. I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. W. Wordsworth 287. Ode on Intimations of Immortality from Recollections of Early Childhood There was a time when meadow, grove, and stream the earth and every common sight to me did seem apparelled in celestial light the glory and the freshness of a dream it is not now as it hath been of yore turn wheresoe'er i may by night or day the things which i have seen i now can see no more the rainbow comes and goes, and lovely is the rose. The moon doth with delight look round her when the heavens are bare. Waters on a starry night are beautiful and fair. The sunshine is a glorious birth. But yet I know, where'er I go, that there hath passed away a glory from the earth now while the birds thus sing a joyous song and while the young lambs bound as to the tabor's sound to me alone there came a thought of grief a timely utterance gave that thought relief and i again am strong the cataracts blow their trumpets from the steep no more shall grief of mine the season wrong i hear the echoes through the mountains throng the winds come to me from the fields of sleep, and all the earth is gay. Land and sea give themselves up to jollity. 
and with the heart of may doth every beast keep holiday thou child of joy shout round me let me hear thy shouts thou happy shepherd boy ye blessed creatures i have heard the call ye to each other make i see the heavens laugh with you in your jubilee my heart is at your festival my head hath its coronal the fullness of your bliss i feel i feel it all o oh, evil day if i were sullen while earth herself is adorning this sweet may morning and the children are pulling on every side in a thousand valleys far and wide fresh flowers while the sun shines warm and the babe leaps up on his mother's arm i hear i hear with joy i hear but there's a tree of many one a single field which i have looked upon both of them speak of something that is gone the pansy at my feet doth the same tale repeat whither is fled the visionary gleam where is it now the glory and the dream our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting the soul that rises with us our life's star hath had elsewhere its setting and cometh from afar not in entire forgetfulness and not in utter nakedness but trailing clouds of glory do we come from god who is our home heaven lies about us in our infancy shades of the prison-house begin to close upon the growing boy but he beholds the light and whence it flows he sees it in his joy the youth who daily farther from the east must travel still is nature's priest and by the vision splendid is on his way attended at length the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day earth fills her lap with pleasures of her own yearning she hath in her own natural kind and even with something of a mother's mind and no unworthy aim the homely nurse doth all she can to make her foster child her inmate man forget the glories he hath known and that imperial palace whence he came behold the child among his new-born blisses a six years darling of a pygmy size see where mid work of his own hand he lies fretted by sallies of his mother's kisses with light upon him from his father's eyes see at his feet some little plan or chart some fragment from his dream of human life shaped by himself with newly learned art a wedding or a festival a mourning or a funeral and this hath now his heart and unto this he frames his song then will he fit his tongue to dialogues of business love or strife but it will not be long ere this be thrown aside and with new joy and pride the little actor cons another part filling from time to time his humorous stage with all the persons down to palsied age that life brings with her in her equipage as if his whole vocation were endless imitation thou whose exterior semblance doth belie thy soul's immensity thou best philosopher who yet dost keep thy heritage thou i among the blind that deaf and silent reads the eternal deep haunted for ever by the eternal mind mighty prophet seer blessed on whom those truths do rest which we are toiling all our lives to find in darkness lost the darkness of the grave thou over whom thy immortality broods like the day a master or a slave a presence which is not to be put by 
thou little child yet glorious in the might of heaven-born freedom on thy being's height why with such earnest pains dost thou provoke the years to bring the inevitable yoke thus blindly with thy blessedness at strife full soon thy soul shall have her earthly freight and custom lie upon thee with a weight heavy as frost and deep almost as life o oh, joy that in our embers is something that doth live that nature yet remembers what was so fugitive the thought of our past years in me doth breed perpetual benediction not indeed for that which is most worthy to be blessed delight and liberty the simple creed of childhood whether busy or at rest with new-fledged hope still fluttering in his breast not for these i raise the song of thanks and praise but for those obstinate questionings of sense and outward things fallings from us vanishings blank misgivings of a creature moving about in worlds not realized high instincts before which our mortal nature did tremble like a guilty thing surprised but for those first affections those shadowy recollections which be they what they may are yet the fountain light of all our day are yet a master light of all our seeing uphold us cherish and have power to make our noisy years seem moments in the being of the eternal silence truths that wake to perish never which neither listlessness nor mad endeavour nor man nor boy nor all that is at enmity with joy can utterly abolish or destroy hence in a season of calm weather though inland far we be our souls have sight of that immortal sea which brought us hither can in a moment travel thither and see the children sport upon the shore and hear the mighty waters rolling evermore then sing ye birds sing sing a joyous song and let the young lambs bound as to the tabor sound we in thought will join your throng ye that pipe and ye that play ye that through your hearts to-day feel the gladness of the may what though the radiance which was once so bright be now for ever taken from my sight though nothing can bring back the hour of splendour in the grass of glory in the flower we will grieve not rather find strength in what remains behind in the primal sympathy which having been must ever be in the soothing thoughts that spring out of human suffering in the faith that looks through death in years that bring the philosophic mind and o oh, ye fountains meadows hills and groves forebode not any severing of our loves yet in my heart of hearts i feel your might i only have relinquished one delight to live beneath your more habitual sway i love the brooks which down their channels fret even more than when i tripped lightly as they the innocent brightness of a new-born day is lovely yet the clouds that gather round the setting sun do take a sober colouring from an eye that have kept watch o'er man's mortality another race hath been and other palms are won thanks to the human heart by which we live thanks to its tenderness its joys and fears to me the meanest flower that blows can give thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears w wordsworth 288 music when soft voices die vibrates in the memory odors when sweet violets sicken live within the sense they quicken rose leaves when the rose is dead are heaped for the beloved's bed 
and so thy thoughts when thou art gone love itself shall slumber on p b shelley end of section 53 recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio also end of the golden treasury of the best songs and lyrical pieces in the english language selected by francis t palgrave